This is Top 30. Coming up, flu season is in full swing. Do you know how to protect yourself? There are easy ways to avoid baggage fees at the airport. And people are spending a lot of money pampering their pets. Hi there, welcome to the show. I'm Kristen Smith, and here are 30 things you need to know right now. Black Friday is right around the corner, and Consumer Reports released the top 10 Black Friday tips for this year. Number 10, beware of the cheapest item. Just because it's the cheapest doesn't mean it's worth the price. Number nine, avoid pricey accessories. Retailers make a good portion of the money convincing you to buy what you can get online for way cheaper. Number eight, consider derivative or generic brands. If you're buying electronics, the derivative brand could perform equally well for less. Number seven, check store return and exchange policies in advance. Number six, I know you know this one, stick to your budget. Number five, check the social media pages of your favorite retailers. They may have some hidden deals. Number four, use loyalty programs. Retailers may send some secret deals in your inbox only. Number three, use price and coupon tools like Google Shopping or Price Grabber. And number two, do your homework. Find the best deals and research what options retailers are offering. And number one, start early. We all know Black Friday starts way before Black Friday. All right, one of the most annoying parts of traveling is the baggage fees, right? And let's face it, 25 bucks per bag can add up fast. So we've put together some tips and tricks to help you avoid the fees and keep that extra cash in your wallet. It all comes down to packing lighter, which might seem daunting, but travel experts say it's easier than you think. First, wear your heaviest and bulkiest clothes on travel days. That will free up much needed space in your carry-on. Also, consider using things like packing cubes and compression bags which squeeze out the excess air to make additional room. Pack mix and match clothing options that can work in a bunch of different combinations. Think neutral colors and layering to get the most out of your wardrobe. And most importantly, change your mindset. This can be the hardest part, but most people overpack and don't end up using half the things in their suitcase. Take it from me, I do it all the time. Plan ahead and think about what you'll really need. And once you're done packing, go through your bag and take out some of the extra stuff so you make sure you just have the bare essentials. And with all the cash you've saved on baggage fees, you can treat yourself to some extra souvenirs on your dream vacation. Well, we're all very excited. There's a new royal baby on the way with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry expecting their first child. Some media reports have described Markle as having a geriatric pregnancy, even though the Duchess of Sussex is just 37 years old. So here to talk about this is Dr. Suzanne gilbert Lenz. Doctor, the term geriatric, I'm thinking might be offensive mm. to new moms. So how yeah. does this even apply to Meghan Markle? We call it advanced maternal age. And the reason is medical. At the age of 35, we see an increased risk of certain very important complications. Increased risk of hypertensive disorders, hypertension in pregnancy, preeclampsia is what we call that, diabetes, gestational diabetes, which can, of course, increase risk of diabetes later in life, growth restriction, preterm labor. I mean, there are a lot of serious risks. And of course, I think one that many women think about is the risk of Down syndrome. So I had my daughter when I was 34, almost 35, and right. I remember sitting in the office and hearing these risks, and it freaked me yeah. out. Yeah. So what do we need to know if we are 35-ish and wanna get pregnant? Yeah, don't freak out. <laughs> okay. So that's always the answer. The most important thing is to optimize your health before you're pregnant to get on. Actually, people don't really start prenatal vitamins before you try to even get pregnant. And you know, my preference is to meet with you as a, your physician before you try to get pregnant. So we can talk about individualizing your care. Great information as always, doctor, thank you. All right, a lot of people would do almost anything for their pet. That's proven even more true as we see a rise in pet pampering. That's right, people are investing more of their money in pet services, grooming, and boarding. The veterinarian's Money Digest says some of the most popular are mobile pet grooming, exclusive pet hotels, and pet technology. Mobile pet grooming is where instead of pets going to the boutique, the boutique comes to them. Pet parents live crazy lives, and this allows their pets to get pedicures, baths, haircuts, even facial and now your dogs no longer have to be stuck in a cage while you're gone or busy. Luxury dog hotels and pet resorts give your pet a suite to themselves. Pet Tech has also surged recently with the release of numerous products to track your pet's activity and health even when you're not around. So now your pooch can live the high life just like you. 
Okay, ever since Kit from Knight Rider, tech companies and automakers have been racing to be the first to get self-driving cars on the road. But how soon is this sci-fi dream going to be a reality? Well, Business Insider broke down the historic race and who they believe will be first to hit the road. Due in large part to top contenders Uber and Lyft's threat to individual car ownership, the stakes have gotten even higher as the majority of autonomous car development has shifted to the ride-sharing industry. To date, Lyft has attracted some of the biggest names in self-driving tech, like Ford, Jaguar, and GM, who invested $500 million and joined the company in developing their autonomous program. This gives Lyft a crucial advantage over its competitors, or competitor, Uber, who has conducted some of the most high-profile and controversial tests of self-driving taxis on public roads. Waymo, the self-driving car spin-off of Google parent company Alphabet, is widely considered the front-runner in this race, after recently announcing an agreement with Lyft to test and later deploy self-driving technology in the ride-hailing firm's network. So if there was any remaining doubt, it looks like self-driving cars are happening. You probably know Pantone is famous for colors. In fact, the company has been standardizing shades since 1956. And those colors have influenced everything from fashion to interior design. But there's another field that's been dominating the color space recently, technology. Think about it, the rose gold iPhone, the bright red Beats headphones, the matte black Amazon Echo. The colors of our favorite devices have affected trends in many other facets of our lives. So Pantone has stepped in to standardize our favorite tech shades. They released a new set of 200 colors called metallic shimmers. Pantone spent more than five years developing the color line and they hope it'll help tech companies design new products. Coloring metal can be tricky and expensive. So getting the color of a new device just right can be the difference between a sellout and the clearance bin. Who knows what shade will dethrone rose gold and become the new color trendsetter. Stay with us. We have more things you need to know coming up. Welcome back. Listen to this fact. According to the CDC, some 80,000 people died last flu season. So to protect yourself from infection, experts still recommend vaccination. But small lifestyle changes may also help. First, wash your hands constantly as you come in contact with potentially germ-infested public objects. Also, clean as soon as you get home to avoid tracking in bacteria from the outside. Disinfect frequently traffic surfaces like light switches and doorknobs. Experts recommend wiping these down daily with bacteria killing wipes or sprays. Next, clean bacteria lingering on overlooked surfaces. Every few days, wipe down tabletops and nightstands with disinfectant wipes and if permitted, wash sheets and towels in hot water. And finally, smartphones. They're covered in more bacteria than a toilet seat, yet we use them constantly. So use a microfiber cloth and some safe cleaning solutions to scrub the germs away. Ultimately, prevention is easier than a cure. So these tips could go a long way in keeping you and your family safe this flu season. All right, for those of us who are busy moms on the go, we need a quick and easy way to make our wardrobe feel fresh and new. So here with her top tips and tricks is fashion expert and my friend, Sydney Sadik. Good to see you as always. Good to see you. Help me out, girlfriend. I mean, it's hard because I am always trying to like find something super fast and half the time I go out not feeling fashionable. It is, and you also don't want to always have to spend money on an entirely new outfit. Yes, right. that's helpful too. Exactly. <laughs> what do we do? So one solution that I have for you is to take your favorite oversized blazer that you typically wear to work okay. and really wear it for a night out. So wear it as a dress, pair it with a really great shoe, tights, and you're ready to go. It's sexy, it's professional, it's really great for transitioning from day to night. Love it. Now something else that I'm loving is cuffing up your sleeves. Ooh. So this will give you that really nice polished look, whether it's with your button down shirt, a dress, it's super easy to do. There's actually an accessory online called Cuffed Up that'll really keep your sleeves from falling down, which is something I know so many women at home really face about their day. So it's I great. I got the cutest shirt last week and I was trying to cuff them and they kept falling down and I took the shirt off. So oh, thank there you. you. Go. Thank you. You needed this then, right? I need this segment. <laughs> yep. What yep. else do you think? So last but not least, pajamas are not just for wearing in bed. You can actually wear them out now by pairing a really fun graphic pajama pant with an oversized turtleneck sweater. This is really cozy. It's chic and all women of any age and body type can really rock this trend. I love love that and I love that you show us how to wear these because if you wear the pajama pant trend wrong it's just <laughs> it's not gonna be a good thing there's definitely a way to do it so <laughs> Sydney thank you so much I love when you come in because you have the best tips thank you I love being here
care. All right, well, moving right along, most Americans will go to great lengths to avoid telling coworkers what they make. That's the conclusion of a recent study by Harvard Business School and UCLA. 80% of respondents said they'd be willing to pay money to stop their salary information from being emailed to their coworkers. About half of people said they would refuse to tell a few peers from work what they take home if they were offered 125 bucks. The researchers said employees may be afraid to ask coworkers about their salaries because that may force them to reveal their own salaries, which they dislike. Transparency about salary has been shown to help women and minorities in the workplace. A separate study found that women who didn't reveal their pay at their last job were offered almost 2% less. But the Harvard study said some workers may be afraid revealing their pay would mean being treated differently by their peers and management. That could be one reason salary is such a taboo topic. Now on to a really great story. One barber is going above and beyond to make a difference in his community. And Mike Jarek from Fox 29 in Philadelphia joins us with more about it. Hi, Mike. Yeah, this is Joe the Barber of Philadelphia. He has two clients. One is Stephen, the other is Nicholas. They're brothers. They're both dealing with autism. And their dad says that they have a hard time, the family's had a hard time over the years, finding a barber who has the patience to deal with their son. So. He not only cuts the hair, Joe does, he's also now raising awareness about autism by throwing fundraisers. My two young clients that I did this for, the awesome Torres boys, Steven's nine, Nicholas is seven. Um, just within like the past year and a half, I, they, the family opened up, everybody opened up, and um, I wanted to give the kids something. Way to go, Joe. Uh, as you can imagine, all the proceeds from these fundraisers go to autism awareness. Nicely done. Nicely done indeed. Such a great story. Thanks, Mike. Okay, let's move on. It's been just over one year since The New Yorker and The New York Times published pieces detailing Harvey Weinstein's alleged sexual assaults. The downfall of Weinstein prompted the hashtag MeToo movement with many women and men sharing stories about sexual harassment in the workplace. But one year later, has the MeToo movement made a difference for women in Hollywood? Most industry insiders say it's too soon to tell. A recent analysis by USC's Annenberg Inclusion Initiative found there's been no significant progress toward gender equality in top grossing films in the past decade. But after Me Too, things are slowly changing. Actress Kristen Stewart says she's seen greater interest in female driven scripts, but she notes there's some hypocrisy in this, since many of these scripts have been around for a long time. And more women are making the shortlist for directing jobs, even if they don't ultimately get the gig. Industry experts say there's been more progress in television than in film, simply because movies take longer to make. Only time will tell if audiences start to see the effects of Me Too up on the big screen and off. Stay with us, we have more Top 30 coming up. Welcome back. Our phones can do almost anything these days. And now there's an app trying to save lives. Noonlight, which was formerly called SafeTrack, is a safety app designed to connect people with rescue services. But now it can call 911 when you can't, like if you've been in a car accident. The makers say the technology includes automatic crash detection and response. They began using a system linking to smartphones to measure changes in the user's location, motion, and force. If a sudden change in force or motion motion is sensed that indicates an accident, the app alerts first responders so that the user doesn't have to. You can even be on a bicycle, scooter, or a lift, and the app can detect if you've been in an accident. The app was originally designed to help college students walk from point A to point B. Now it's grown to send first responders for suspicious motion around your home or when your heart rate reaches a dangerous level. If you're home alone and need help, you can even tell your Alexa and Noonlight will get you the help you need. Well, having the drive and vision to turn a dream into a reality can be a lot harder than it sounds. We have CEO and national best-selling author Kim Perrell with us today to talk about what she thinks is the one skill that leads to success. Welcome, Kim. Thanks for having me. I think your book title gives it away a little bit, The Execution Factor. So execution is imperative. What do you mean by that? Execution is what separates success from failure. Based on my experience, and I've invested about 70 different companies, and looking back at what has really enabled them to be successful, I found that it is execution. So how do you get from the dream to making it a reality? 
well, it's so much easier to just sit in bed dreaming, isn't it? Yes. Than doing anything. <laughs> so it's actually, you know, it's really looking at what is, what is your vision? So having a crystal clear picture of what you want to achieve and then being passionate about it. You know, passion really, it's a Latin root word for pain or suffering. So what are you so passionate about that you're willing to suffer for? Passion is gonna fuel you to take action. What's the one step you can do today to get you closer to your goal or your vision? Studies have shown that if you write down your goals, you'll make nine times as much over the course of your life than if you don't. So why wouldn't you? I wrote down my goals since I was eight. I've written down my whole career path and it, it worked. It I, does. I think there's, there's a valid point to that. Me too. So I highly encourage everyone to write down your goal and put it somewhere you can see it every day. I put mine on my bathroom mirror. My husband can see it, my children can see it, but everyone knows what my priority is. So inspiring, Kim, thank you. And don't forget, you can pick up a copy of The Execution Factor in bookstores and online. Well, dinner plans can be so stressful. We don't know if we want Thai, Mexican, Italian, or what. But if we went to those countries, would we find those same foods? An article in Insider says probably not. It lists seven Italian foods that Americans eat that you typically won't find in Italy. First, spaghetti and meatballs. In Italy, spaghetti isn't typically served with meatballs. Second, to-go coffee. Taking coffee to-go is frowned upon. Italians say it's meant to be enjoyed. Third, Italian dressing. In Italy, pre-packaged dressing just doesn't happen in general. Fourth, garlic bread. You won't find that, but you may find some thinner bread with olive oil. Fifth, combining seafood with cheese. Apparently, this is just a no-no. Insider says the unpopularity came from a time in Italian history when seafood was plentiful, but cheese was not. Sixth, a single slice of pizza. Here, it's expected, but there, you've got to get a personal pizza. And finally, portion sizes. Americans typically serve a larger portion size than Italians. So you may want to plan ahead because your dinner will be a lot smaller. There's a new use for the Apple Watch, medical research. Apple has announced it will donate 1,000 watches to a study about binge eating at the University of North Carolina. Participants will get a watch so that scientists can monitor their heart rate to see if it can predict episodes of binging. Those in the study will also be able to sign up for a mobile app called Recovery Record. It lets them log their eating and urges to binge to be shared with researchers later. The app also suggests coping techniques. More than 30 million Americans suffer from an eating disorder, but it's not the only health condition being studied using the Apple Watch. The device will also be used in another study to figure out why some patients recover from knee and hip surgery faster than others. Another study found the watch could detect serious heart problems with 97% accuracy. Some researchers say Apple Watch users are more likely to manage their health conditions. Now let's talk about cost of living. It's typically not a fun conversation because in some cities, it can really break the bank. Take where you live, for example, and think about if it's affordable for most people. For many, this is not the case. Bigger and more expensive U.S. cities are seeing an increase in those moving out. The U.S. Census Bureau says that more Americans are moving to second-tier cities and counties after being priced out of the bigger cities. Los Angeles, Brooklyn, New York, and Chicago are experiencing the biggest outbound population population, while Denton, Texas, Clark County, Nevada, and Maricopa County, Arizona are experiencing the biggest inbound population. And if you know your geography, you know that these counties are right outside of Dallas, Las Vegas, and Phoenix. Reports state that those living in the second tier cities are more likely to have a higher quality of life than they would in some of America's biggest cities. These second tier cities are where rent and mortgages take a smaller fraction of your budget. You may think the bigger cities will experience a hurt, but it's likely they won't. The larger cities tend to be home to those who are immigrating from other countries and will also grow with births. Stay with us, we have more Top 30 coming up. Welcome back. Oftentimes, kids with special needs aren't able to enjoy the benefits of their local playground. But the John Dolan School in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, just opened up the first sensory playground in the area so all the students can have a place to play. We go to the park a lot, but we sit and watch the other kids. And um, we'll sit and watch other kids play, and maybe there'll be a little bit of ramp we can get on, but there'll be sand that we can't get our chair through. The sensory playground is completely wheelchair accessible and is filled with different textures 
pictures for kids with autism and other developmental disorders to enjoy. And he just went and stayed on the playground. For 45 minutes, he went from activity to activity. And in my life, I don't think we spent more than about five minutes on a playground. So it was, it was life-changing for him. And as a mom, it was life-changing for me too. The school board wasn't able to supply the funding for the playground, so it was all up to the parents to cover the $583,000 cost. And through bake sales and anonymous donations, they reached their goal, giving the kids a safe place to have some fun and feel like anyone else. Such a great story, and that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on past episodes of Top 30 now on Hulu. You can also download the Top 30 mobile app and visit our website. We want to hear from you, so connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, follow, and subscribe to at Top 30 TV for interviews and exclusive web content. We'll see you next time on Top 30.